a painstaking amount of detail goes into picking the right size, the right craft, the right material, the right coloration, and we have awards to give out. Please welcome our Hall Cosplay judges. And give it up for Lizzie laying down the trophies. Yes. Now take back that applause for Lizzie, who's learning the just kidding, just kidding. We've worked hard, we've earned this. <laughs> Come on. Come on up. Can I trouble you to introduce yourselves? Hi! I woke up in a bed today. Not the one I fell asleep in, but I did. Can I trouble you to introduce yourself to, to the crowd and a little bit about what you're wearing today? Hi, my name is Jennifer. I have 12 years of cosplay and sewing experience. I'm currently cosplaying Sakura from Subasa. Hello, I'm Trisha Cakes Cosplay. Obviously, Fire Force for my fans out there. Been cos <laughs> I've been cosplaying for probably about 10 years now, and I actually work full time in a cosplay business. So. Hello, I'm Lemiriana Cosplay. I have about 10 years experience. I specialize in props, armor, and resin work, and I'm currently <coughs> cosplaying as Mitsuri from Demon Slayer. than I do right now. Cosplay as Hagami Kitazawa. Do you have pictures coming up? Awesome. So this one is amazing. Uh, she came in and she has these really cool articulated gloves and these. Um... The picture's gone. The picture's gone. <laughs> Here we go. Dinosaur. Yeah, she's a dinosaur. She had this amazing hood with these ears and all of these spines, and it was super cool. Um, really excellent sewing. So our honorable mention, first one goes to her. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we wanted to see the screen too. <laughs> Our next honorable mention is going to go to okay, <laughs> Kimari 103 as Violet Evergarden. I absolutely adored you. You had, <laughs> it was so cute. It was accurate to the show. I loved your sleeves. I loved you trying new techniques. So overall, just great job. Our third honorable mention goes to our contestant number six, Sharp Big Sarah, as Krilly Mayer Baldson. <laughs> Overall, we were just really impressed about the detail. There we go. Just the prop work that she had, the details that she put in, everything was just phenomenal.
next we have judges awards and for my judges award I picked a cosplayer who had an amazing personality went above and beyond trying new techniques uh, was not afraid to experiment and you know I absolutely love that when you just kind of push your limits with a costume so my judges award goes to Seth Night Road by Kiwi Namora cosplay <laughs> And again, I just absolutely enjoyed that hat. It was, it was great. <laughs> I see you, you're coming. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Our next judges award goes to somebody I thought really brought a lot of energy, a lot of personality to her character. It goes to Flora Wren as Ignatz Victor from Fire Emblem. <laughs> just the small little details that she added, the belts, the magnets, everything that she used was just phenomenal. The prop that she did was really amazing. This award goes to Darth Organa by Blue Mirror Cosplay. She's coming. So the sewing on this costume is absolutely beautiful. She drapes this whole dress and she's got this lovely mesh and it's just amazing. Um, and also her hair is extensions and it matches so well we thought it was actually her real hair. for best beginner and that one is going to go to oh. <laughs> was just, it was gorgeous, so. Great job! Best in class intermediate was somebody that we were really amazed by. It was Whoops Creation as Zhao from Genshin Impact. The number of different mediums that she put into this, the resin work, the 3D work, the dyeing of the silk was just phenomenal. Everything came together perfectly. advance goes to Atlas Martin as Mother Miranda. <laughs> All right, so this costume is absolutely beautiful. The sewing was lovely, the lace. This, she's got this amazing headdress. It was just really fantastic. Just 
Again, they're perfect. These guys did such a great job with their foam work, their prop work, their sewing. You probably can't see anything. <laughs> so great job, you guys. You might be out of order. These guys, right here. <laughs> of Saturday. This is somebody that we were really impressed with the painting that they did. It was Aksu as Joker from Black Butler. Not sure if I see her here, but again, with somebody we were very impressed with, the designs that she made and the painting, the paintwork that she did. There she is. So I have a very special award. This is our Spirit Award, and it goes to Logan from Halo. He was so enthusiastic when he came in to tell us about how he built this costume. It's the first one he's made. He did like vacuum forming and painting, and his backpack opens, and it was really fantastic. I think this is the fun one. This is the one that really impressed us the most. I'm going to say their name and stop stalling because it's going to take them a minute to get up here. So our best of weekend goes to Milky Sakura as Hisani Miku. You'll see it. You've seen it. <laughs> I specialize in a lot of 3D printing and the amount of work that went into getting this cosplay together and getting it to just stay put is just very impressive. The details are just there. It's just a gorgeous cosplay. Play fund. And you get a piece of paper. A piece of paper is the most important. We all know that. Anything else you guys want to say? Super great thanks to all of our entrants. Thank you for coming out. You were all so positive and you had so much energy, and we loved being there to see you. I just want to thank everybody who came out to the cosplay contest. It takes a lot of courage to come into that room and be in front of us. We know you guys are nervous. We've all done it too. And just thank you for being there and just keep cosplaying because you guys are what makes it worth being here all weekend. You guys are the reason that we are here. So your energy, your passion for what we do is the reason why we're here. Every single one of you was amazing this weekend. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I made this. Um, so, Uncle Yao, the judges are thinking really hard about the masquerade winners. And what's happening? Oh. 
use mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lower. Too low. Just right. I have the first act. I hope that was okay to do tech crew. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize it. <laughs> Anyhow, so yeah, they're still deciding. They're almost done. So uh, he's going to do what he does best. Stall. When my sister turned seven years old, in suburban Pennsylvania, I can tell you the town, Levittown, I would have been... Yeah, that's about what it deserves. <laughs> One person clapping because they don't know any better. My sister turned seven years old. I must have been four or five at the time, and my parents hired someone to show up to the birthday party with all the cousins in a gorilla costume with balloons and a boom box, and they did the chicken dance, and they danced with the kids all night, and the kids were like, it's a gorilla. And at the end of the party, at the end of the cake, we blow out the candles, and the gorilla walked down the driveway, waved goodbye to everyone, and walked down the sidewalk off into the darkness. His job complete. Thank you, birthday gorilla. So all the kids are inside. We're watching a Disney movie, and my aunts and uncles and my parents say, it's a beautiful night out here. How about beer on the patio? Absolutely. So they're out there having a good time, and about a half an hour goes by. My uncle squeals the car in front of the house, comes out of the car, a sweating mess, in a half put together gorilla costume with balloons in the back. And he says, I'm so sorry, I'm late, I'm so sorry, I'm late, what did I miss, what did I miss? And my parents go, what do you mean? You, you just, we thought you went, you, you did great. I was trying to call you, because this was the mid 80s. We did not have cell phones, and the gas station where his car broke down did not have a payphone. To this day, we do not know, as a family, who was the second gorilla. Now the most rational thing we can think of, obviously, is time travel twin, most likely, something going wrong with the transporter. But the other, even creepier version means there is a man with a half gorilla costume looking out into the night, waiting for the gorilla symbol to come up over the clouds. I gotta go, Doris. They need me. Frank, please, you're too old. Think of your hip, think of what the doctor said. It's never for me, it's for the kids. They need birthday gorilla. <laughs> My mother, God bless her for everything that she has ever said and done to me. She is my biggest fan. She does not understand movies. One of the reasons I got so hard into media was the very clear understanding after our, our first film together, she does not retain anything. We read the first Harry Potter book. She reads the first Harry Potter book. She comes down the stairs, weeping. Hey, look, look, mirror, dead parents, sad, happy, good. Okay, I read the book. This is good. We'll probably make a movie out of this. A year later, the movie's announced, and I tell my mom, you should reread the book, because I'm going to take you to go see the first Harry Potter movie. And without fail, she runs down to the basement where my bedroom is again. Mirror, dead parents, sad, good read. I know you did this last year. When? We take her to see Harry Potter and the plot hole that I don't remember the last name of. Within the first 10 minutes, her first question, why is everyone talking all Britishy? Interesting. We get halfway through the film and she taps my shoulder again and asks, is Snape bad? I don't have an hour, I just say keep watching. I'm engaged. I like the first movie. Then I hear snoring. Then 20 minutes later, I feel a third tap, tap, tap on my shoulder. 
It's the end of the movie. You know, the villain's got like the headdress off of Voldemort's walking backward. Harry, let me finger you. Or whatever. I haven't seen it in years. So he's walking backward toward Harry. And my mom leans in and asks, probably for context, who's Professor Quir- uh, Quirrell? Have we seen him previously in the movie? Who is this Voldemort guy? Who are the Death Eaters? Who's Harry? I'm leaving you here. But since then, my mother can only identify movies with who saw the movie with us, okay? All right, we're gonna play a couple of uh, games called Who, What Is Uncle Yo's Mom Talking About? Ready, ready? Your first clue, your first clue, your first movie. The man was sad and had hair. That's right, Thor Ragnarok. You guessed Thor Ragnarok, you are correct. Now, this is, this is the gold standard, this is the important one. Okay, remember? We saw it with your sister. It's the one that but I, we saw it with your sister. We, you know, your grandma was that we saw. We, the, they're in the car and the car is moving. We saw it with your sister. What was your guess? Very close. Okay. Okay. Very good. The answer is Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is the movie where they're in the car. And the car is moving. Now, when I think of the movie Jurassic Park, a certain D letter word comes to mind. Many times. Maybe two syllables into describing Jurassic. It's dinosaur. Were you thinking of the word dinosaur? Because I was. Jurassic dinosaur. Jur dinosaur. Never once crossed her mind at the start of March two years ago my original industry which was live events that went away and I said that's okay I have my backup career hospitality and restaurant oh hmm. it turns out if you watch The Office enough on repeat on Netflix they stop asking if you're watching they just sign you up for better help and Prozac because it took a while, we did not know if any of this was going to come back, which is why I will actively say, vulnerably, I am so grateful to see so many of you, because I didn't know if I ever would again. So the Jacob Javits Center eventually opened up and became Project Gotham Shield. We were dosing about 8,000 people a day in the Jacob Javits Center when the Pfizer vaccine came out. And I said, I will absolutely work and volunteer for that. So we did data entry. The nurses who I got to meet and work with a different nurse every day, some of them were coming in from Africa, some of them were from the Philippines, some of them were coming in from the Caribbean, which is just Africa, but maybe a little faster. Just kidding. If any of their, if their nerves were any harder, any farmer of steel, they would be kidnapped by Ukrainian farmers, okay? These were badass women, every single one of them. What this also meant was we were trying to vaccinate New Yorkers. Old New Yorkers who hadn't left the house for two years. And even older New Yorkers who never occurred to them to leave the house once in their lives. If I worked for NPR, I'd have two new book proposals. I had one dude sit down. You ready for, you ready for the shot? Yeah, just stick me through my jacket. You want us to put the needle through your jacket. Son, son, you do not want jacket in your bloodstream and blood on your jacket stream. I want to take my shirt off. Okay, here's what I can do for you, buddy. I can select left arm, right arm, or I can scroll down for oral or left buttock or right buttock. So if you want to drop your drawers right now and present to the Javis Center. All right, let me take off my jacket. I sat down with people who were very clearly terrified of needles, terrified to be out of the house for the first time, terrified. And when I would see the shakes, when I would see the apprehension around, of course, the deadly needle, social worker gene kicks in. Just come around the side, drop the phone. Oh no, distraction, nurse gets you. Grab the hand and ask them, are you a cat person or a dog person? What do you have at home? I have a little wire terrier, his name is Mickey, he's my all time favorite. Okay, you're good to go. The nurse got you 20 seconds ago. I'm not getting the shot. No, she got you now 30 seconds ago. I thought I was getting a shot. You were talking about your dog. You got your shot 40 seconds ago. You're okay to go. Please let go of my hand. It's turning blue now. I will never forget this one dude. 
one face. So I sit down next to him, clearly a little nervous about to get the needle. Okay, so you can focus on me, sir. Talk to me. Can you tell me your birthday? Can you tell me your address? Are you a dog person or a cat person? And I will never forget. Bird! <laughs> Not a complete sentence. Not plural. One bird. I was clearly vaccinating the penguin. He went home to a dead canary in a cage and said, we told them, Steve. Now they know. I was grateful for the vaccine because it saved us. Has anyone gotten the nasal swab back in the day? The nasal swab before? We had army medics on site and this one dude looked at my nostril every day and stabbed it like it owed him money. It was like Captain Ahab into the white, white man's nostril. He scraped me and I forgot my mother's name. For like three weeks, it was just DEFCON 5. Every fluid in my head came out of places other than my head. So what I'm saying is, I'm so grateful to be back in the building. And I'm so grateful to see Senkai gone again. And for maple bacon donuts. This is of course the saddest part of every cosplay masquerade at Senkai Con, when the farmer's market closes, they don't have access to the maple bacon donut until next year. But what we do have are winners to announce. What we do have are trophies. And what I do have is my lovely head of cosplay, Lizzie. Are uh, our ready? Okay. I have to stall, because he starts to pick somebody. Um, the one younger than me. <laughs> no, that doesn't... <laughs> but, come on in. He's gonna pick somebody real quick. Just, just flip through and pick one and call it a day, okay? First, I'd like to thank the tech crew for their amazing job. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the cosplay staff who keep me together and make sure everybody gets on stage. We're just moving center. Thank you guys. I love you. Call cosplay contestants and walking on stage. Y'all did awesome. Masquerade people. It wouldn't be a masquerade without the masquerade peeps. Thank you so much for pretty much taking a lot of time out of your Saturday to create a show for everybody. That's pretty cool. And then thanks to my judges who have to make hard decisions. Who wants to go first? I will fight you. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. Hi. You're welcome. <laughs> So we wanted to start off with the honorable mentions. Everybody did an amazing job. You should all be proud of yourselves. We were amazed by the creativity. Our first honorable mention goes to skit number three for Dio. Those facial expressions and those dances wooed us. Thank you. They are coming, are they coming, where are they? There we are! Give it up for the Pose Master. We loved how unique this skit was. We loved, again, the energy. It was a delight to watch. They're coming, they're coming. Woo! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> All right. Our next honorable mention goes to skit number seven. It is Sakizo. We just like this skit and the costume was done very well. Um, also, this is a really good like solo skit and it was really cute and loved it and loved the props as well, so.
right, our next, and I apologize if I don't remember, but um, <laughs> number 10 for the, our last honorable mention. Number 10. <laughs> I see you. Yes, okay, yes, this Genshin Impact. And we love the creativity of this skit. And we loved, uh, you know, having the easel. It was like a tearaway costume. It was like a tearaway costume, but it's it's an easel. <laughs> so congratulations. We love some true art. Now we get to move on to honestly one of the funnest parts of the evening: the judges' awards. So for my judges award, I wanted to give this to a skit that does some that did something very near and dear to my art, my heart. Goodness. That goes to skit number 5. I love me a good tearaway costume. Yes. I love me a good tearaway costume. Those dance moves, the music, I loved it. Y'all did a great job. And again, the creativity, the uniqueness, this is very deserving. We love to see that energy. Love you see you running up the aisle. <laughs> All right. So my judges award, as soon as I saw this skit, I was just like, oh my gosh. And I was tearing up, but I thought it was adorable. And how could you not think this was adorable? But my judges award goes to skit number one because that doggo was adorable! <laughs> and I think this is the first time I've seen like a animal or someone's pet in a masquerade, so I thought it was really cool. <laughs> guest award for me, Mithril Arts, and I thought this skit was fantastic. Um, the, the movement and the, the way this cosplayer um, had, the, had their harness set up, so nothing was moving, nothing was falling off, and I enjoyed the craftsmanship and how this cosplayer, um, they, they used um, remarkable use of materials, that's one of my things, and um, I, I love the teeth on your costume as well. So a number 11, please step up. The spider. The spider walked up the convention stairs. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Great job. Okay, can I? Hello. What's the microphone? Hi, I'm Lizzie. Yeah. I get to give up my MC award. I loved the details, and um, I'm sorry to be redundant, but I have uh, I have courage and faith in anyone who brings on not only their own solo set pieces, but their own props, but also commits to the character. My award goes to skit number seven for Toma. Well, I'm from a rose. Tech people, you got a microphone? <laughs> no? Okay, I want you to sign to me what you want to say cool about yours. Their award goes to number 12, Princess Tutu, the Sonos Award. They're clapping, there's four of them standing, there's thumbs up, I think. Don't give me the finger, that's not right. <laughs> Their feedback was thumbs up. It's like they, everyone else is going to thumbs up the start all day, and now they're giving you thumbs up. Hello again. Okay. 
Okay. Now we got the spicy awards. By that, I mean the best of categories. Are y'all ready for this? <laughs> All right. This is best beginner. Goes to skit number 14. <laughs> Love us some cute dragon maid. The energy, the cuteness. Y'all should see her scallops up close. This was an adorable and wonderful and well put together costume and very deserved. You did such a good job and we love that tail. Like that tail is awesome. It bounces! <laughs> And now, we give another spicy award. <laughs> My name is Wild Spice. <laughs> All right, spicy! All right, so, best intermediate goes to skit number two. These ladies had some lovely, uh, as you can see, they got lighting all up in there. They got lighting through their skirts. <laughs> yeah, sure. But yeah, if you couldn't tell, they had lighting all in their skirts and their little Muse logos also lit up as well. So it was really cool and they did a lot of different sewing techniques. So we loved it. <laughs> All right, so this is for Best Advanced, and this award goes to skit number 12. Come on up, Princess Tutu. <laughs> and while she's coming up, we love the details in this costume. It's so glittery, it's elegant, it's perfect for a ballerina. Uh, we, we felt it was uh, very special that um, the, our Princess Tutu, the, the stage was not meant for dancing, so uh, Princess Tutu had to kind of hold back uh, with the dancing. So, but it was very elegant and beautiful. Congratulations. Side note, I've been holding onto these trophies for two years Aww. in my basement, sad in a box. Now they're out! Yay! Best idol? Okay. All right, now we're going to announce our best idol group award. Can I get a drum roll in the audience, please? All right. Our best idol award goes to skit number six! Costumes did have some help. They, she hand cut all the um, gold trim on the skirt. It just looks really awesome. Yeah. Woo! All right, um, we actually need you also to stay on stage because we have one more award for you guys. Are you ready? Are you ready, y'all? You have won best in show. Let's give them a round of applause. They did such a good job. We love to see it. <laughs> You're welcome. Good job. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yes. <laughs> Photo op. <laughs> Also, for 
for any of you in the audience that was ever on the fence on doing the masquerade, go for it. It's so much fun if you had nerves and were afraid to get on stage. Imagine how a lot of these people felt to getting up on stage. So take that chance, get up on stage, have a fun time, and if you didn't win this time, definitely keep going. You're all amazing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause to our tireless tech, to our hall and masquerade judges, all of our participants who are future winners, all of our current winners, our cosplay staff. I've been your host, Uncle Yo. You have a long night ahead of you. You have dances, board games, ravings, video games. Your night has just begun. Thank you, Zenkai Con 2022.